Good evening. Welcome to the Conscious Creators Toolbox. It's it's Thursday, November the 11th, 2021. I'm Jean Aaron, Conscious Creator, like yourself. And it is my pleasure. My, uh, I just always get excited about having the opportunity to share. Um, just to talk a little bit about who, what, and whose we are, who you are. And... We're gonna go. Be, we're gonna be talking about that again tonight, and it's what Conscious Creators Toolbox is all about. It's for now you know, taking the opportunity to recall and to remember and to proclaim and to profess and to just to you know just brag about who, what, and whose we are. We are, we are infinite beings, infinite and unrestricted and unlimited re beings who, who's created in the image of our Maker, our Creator, Father, Universe, God whatever and whomever you refer to your higher power, your higher source. We are created out of the same stuff that our creators and, and, and we're made out of that same stuff. And we can do, we can do what our creator and our maker can do. And we are totally unrestricted, unlimited. And I remind, I remind my clients and I remind you <laughs> that we're only restricted and we're only limited by the limit and restriction that we place and we have on our Father, all right? So tonight we're gonna to be talking, uh, we're gonna be talking, uh, I'm gonna to go to talk a little bit more about uh, some of those Bible stories and we kind of talked a little bit about it last week, some of those Bible stories that um, we learned or we, we heard about growing up as kids and, and children and we're gonna be talking about um, Jesus, Jesus the Christ and the anointed, the the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. And we're, gonna, we're not going to talk too much about uh, what all that means, but we are going to talk about the man Jesus and um, share his professions and his his thoughts and beliefs of who he was and whose he was and talk about some of the things that he did as uh, that person that he was and he, he talked about. Anyway, so I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, again, I'm not gonna prolong this. I'm gonna kind of get in and out of here about 30 minutes. I'm gonna be done. But I wanna start by uh, just kind of asking you to imagine, to imagine being one of the people who followed Jesus when he walked on the earth, walked the earth. Imagine being able to witness all of the awesome things that he did, the miracles that he performed, healings, forgiving outcast, offering forgiveness to outcast, and feeding. Remember feeding all those 5,000 people a couple of times, in fact, using a couple of loads of bread and a few fish. <laughs> imagine, imagine being able to listen to his teaching as he taught on the seashore, sitting in the boats or whatever. And just imagine feeling, having a sense of awe and wonder about all the wondrous things that he did, causing the storms to be still, walking on water, casting out the demons, all those things that he did. Just imagine being a witness of all of that and marveling at his power, at his love, demonstration of that love, and just being pretty much floored by everything that you saw or you witnessed him do or perform. And some of the things that he talked about or he said you know, or a little bit out there and, you know, like, did he really say that? Or did he mean what he said? Or what is he saying? And what does that mean? You, we, we, just imagine, just imagine that. That was me as a little girl. And sometimes even now. But back in those days when I was a little girl or a child, protected from a lot of the realities and cruelties and even brutalities of the world. I was pretty much protected. I was a child. I was innocent. 
And I guess it best described that time as being kind of innocent and, 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 and listening to all those stories and, and having my having them told to me by Sunday school teachers and Bible school teachers and church school teachers and even my parents. I heard those stories about Jesus. And I, as a little girl, marveled as I do even now today. And I don't, I doubt very much, and I have no doubt that there, I'm not alone when we think about them. And some of them are so unbelievable that we tend to doubt or sometime want proof or how could that be? Or that's just a story. You know, we have our, we have our own, own, um, explanations or understandings or conclusions or beliefs and not and under a knowledge about these things you know how in the world is I was as a little girl I always wondered how in the world could a person do those things you know who you know makes up a, a mud putty I used to make mud cakes all the time but I can't imagine you know putting it over a blind man's eye and smearing it over there and washing it off and that person is able to see. I was awe. I was a, just, a, it was an, it was an, it was, I was in awe. I was in awe as a child. But I don't know, I, I, as a child, I believed it. I believed it without hesitation, but I just wondered how was it possible? I didn't doubt it. I did not believe it. They said it. My Sunday school teacher said it. My parents said it. My, you know, the Preacher said it, you know, these folk that I believed and trust, they said it, so I believed them. But I wanted to know how. How, 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 how. Tell me how he did it. So maybe I want to be able to do that. I was so impressed and uh, believing that it was possible. And how, how was it done so I can do it too? And I would ask them. I would ask my teachers and my parents. And I got many different answers and many different approaches were presented to me in regards to that question. But I think that the one that stood out to me most was the answer that my grandmother gave me. I remember she said to me, you know, Jean, Jesus came here to do a job. He came here for a purpose. And, um, he finished it. He came here to do what he came here to do, and he finished it. He did it. He finished what he came here to do. Everything, she said, that Jesus came here to do, he did it. He finished it. He didn't leave anything undone. It was all done. But why couldn't anybody else do what he did? I would ask my grandmother. What made him so different? And she said that Jesus wasn't the only little boy boy in that time. There were thousands of boys who could have done what Jesus did, but they didn't. Jesus did that, she said. They could have performed every single miracle that Jesus performed, but they didn't. But Jesus did. God is the same father to each, to all of those little boys, she would tell me. And those little, those little children back in those days, that he was the same father that he was to Jesus. But they didn't know God like Jesus knew God, she said. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't know God and believe that God was their father, like Jesus knew and believed that God was his father and that God was in him and he was in God and he and God and he and his father were one. He said, they didn't believe it. They didn't know it and they didn't believe it, but Jesus did. I remember that conversation 
that I had with my grandmother all those years ago. And I visited and, and I've kind of recalled them often, very often throughout my life. I think about that one, that particular conversation. And I remember how I would listen to her explain to me that Jesus knew that God was his father, that he was his son, that he and his father were one and the same. I didn't understand what that meant, really. How can you be one with another person? But in some way, like all the miracles and the, and the awesome things that he performed that I didn't understand, that I, I didn't, I couldn't understand that concept of him being one with his father and his father and him being one in the same. I couldn't quite understand that. I'm sorry, just a second. I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. I believed God, I believed God and I believed Jesus and I believed all the things that he did but I didn't understand it. But I wanted to, I wanted to understand. But my grandmother simply said, because Jesus knew and believed who he was. And I said, wow, I wanna know and I wanna believe who I am, that I too am like Jesus, one with my father, one with God, God in me and me and God. I wanted to know and I wanted to have that same belief and that same knowing that God and that Jesus knew. Tonight I want to continue sharing my understanding of how our gifts and talents and purpose guide us toward completing the work that we were sent here to do, that we came here to complete. Jesus called it about my father's business. And if we are like Jesus, one with Father, one with God, one with the universe, one with divine, we too should be about our Father's business. We too have a purpose and a mission and, a, and work to, and a job to do and things to do and get done because that's what we're sent here to do. You know, my conversation that I had with my grandmother reminded, reminded me or reminds me of a Bible story that Jesus, um, a Bible story about Jesus and his followers. And, 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 and I, know, I know that he was always, Jesus was always consistent and persistent in expressing who and what and whose he was. He never hesitated. He never missed words. He never bit his tongue. He never took anything back. He never said, well, I guess, or I think, or, or you know, I want to be. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. I am one with my father. My father and I are one. My father is in me, and I am in father. He said that. He didn't mince words. He didn't bite his tongue. He didn't change his mind. He didn't have a different story for a different person. He said it consistently to whomever and however and in whatever situation he found himself. He never faltered in explaining and exclaiming who he was. One with the Father. He was forever professing, ever proclaiming. And again, not one verse contradicts or take that back or changes it in any way at all. He said who he was. He believed it. He knew it. He said he and Father are one. Not everyone believes that we are indeed one. I do. I do because I want to I wanna believe. I want to believe that. I want to know that. It is my desire and it has been my desire since I was a little girl to know and believe who, what, and whose I am like Jesus knew and believed who, what, and whose he was or is. I 
I want to believe I have a desire to have that same type of relationship with God, that oneness that Jesus talked about. I want that. I want to believe that. And I believe that. My desire is to believe it. My desire is to believe and know like Jesus. It's been a long, long road to this knowing and to this belief. And even now, I get caught off guard or I stumble when trying to express and explain and proclaim and and just share my understanding, my knowing and my belief to other people. I haven't quite mastered <laughs> Jesus' persist persistence and his consistency and but I'm working on it. I'm gonna and I'm gonna continue to work on it and I'm gonna get better. So what exactly is this oneness that Jesus was talking about and this oneness that I'm, be I'm believing and I'm knowing? Well, it simply means that we are all connected or in another, in another simple way, we can look at, we can say, we, we can look at it and say what, that we are all part of one whole not so much in the physical or the 3D, but still connected nonetheless. And since everything is one, what I do to you, I do also to myself. For me, for me, the whole that each of us and everything is, is, a, is, is, is so vast and it's so deep and it's so complex complex that it is it's kind of like knowledge that's beyond what our minds and our mentalities can grasp and express and describe and put into words you know I feel or, or I have a deep sense that there was this one all this one whole this one singular consciousness that was there maybe out beyond time and out beyond space, maybe even. And this one all, complete whole, singular consciousness wanted to know itself. Wanted to know itself. I don't know why. <laughs> why does anybody want to know anything? But wanted to know and experience what it, what it was, what is consciousness, what is this? Well, the only way we can really know anything at all is to really experience it. So how does one, how does one experience anything? How do I experience myself as an individual, as a person, as conscious, as a, existing as a way? Say if I was light, say I'm light. How do I experience light? I'm a light, I'm light. How do I experience light? How do I get to know the truth about light? Well, in order to know light, I have to step out of light so that I can look back at light to get a view of light, to understand what light looks like, what light, what light appears to be. What I have to be outside of it to look back at it. I can't be light and look down and see the fullness of myself and understand that and have a knowing of it or experience it. So I have to step out of light into darkness in order to know myself as light. And the same would be for anything. To experience love, 
I have to step outside of love into fear in order to look back and understand and know what love really is. Compassion, goodness, all of those things require that I be outside of it, looking back at it in order to know it and experience it. Anything, everything. It's kind of like a mirror. <laughs> Say for instance, you just put on your best outfit, looking all good and you're looking great, you're looking good. But in order to see yourself in full view, you can look down and you can see part of you, but to experience the total part of you, that total experience, what you truly, truly appear to be in that beautiful outfit, that best dress that you just put on, you have to have something to reflect back to you so that you can see it in its entirety, in its fullness. You know, you may be able to look down and see parts of it. You know, I can't see my face unless I have a mirror to reflect it back. We need something to give us that reflection, that full view of self. <laughs> Mirrors and reflections, we may have to talk about that in a topic later or some other time but anyway anyway one of the dialogues that Jesus shared about himself and his father was he was simply saying that he, he kind of explained it he's he simply saying that he that he was he and his father were one you see me you see the father is what he said you see me you see father what he was saying is that he was the mirror or the reflection that expose God to you and to him, to, to, to the world, to himself. You see me, you see Father. I'm a reflection of Father. I'm a reflection of God. I'm a reflection of the universe. I'm one with Father. You see me, you see Father. You see Father. So we too are mirrors like Jesus was mirror to God. We too are mirrors. And we're reflecting back to expose the full view of our own unique individual concepts and beliefs of who and what God is in and to us. Dare I say that sometimes or oftentimes <laughs> we look into a clouded or distorted or broken mirror seeing a cloudy, distorted, broken reflection of God in ourselves and in one another is possible. Hmm. One is will always be a challenge for our minds. We can't comprehend it. We can't express it because it's just kind of tough. It's a, it's, a, it's a hard sell to our mentality. But know this. Know this and believe this as Jesus the Christ believed. We are one. And with the mind and the same beliefs and the, with the same mind of Christ, the same spirit of Christ, we too can believe and know who we are. That we are also one with God, one with Father, and consequently one with each other. Let me encourage you to seek to reveal that knowing. For it is like Jesus in us. As Father, as Jesus said, as Father and I are one, so are me, you, so we are. We and Father are one. I'm gonna, I wanna read a, 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 a scripture from, uh, well, something that Jesus said. And it's, you can find it in the New Testament, I believe it was. I have to tell you, I'm not exactly sure right off the top where it was, but Jesus said, this is what Jesus said. Jesus believed, Jesus said this, just believe, just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. 
you can say the same thing. Just believe that I am, you are. When you say I am, that's what Jesus, Jesus was saying. Just believe that I am, you are, in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. You don't have to believe that it's me, but believe the work that I do. Believe in that. Actions speak louder than words sometimes anyway. But Jesus went on to say, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same work that I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, the name of I am, and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. That was in John chapter 14, I believe it was, and around verses, I believe it was verses 12. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to find that for sure, but it's in John, John uh, in John, the New Testament, John, the Gospel of John. I'm going to leave you, uh, leave, I'm going to leave it here, there tonight, and I will, um, but I do want to leave you with this thought. And I'm going to conclude with this. We are indeed one. And we're from the same one. And in order for us to know and experience that oneness that we are, we had to step out and down as Jesus did. In order to know and experience the wonders, the miracles, and the awe of who, what, and whose we are. I see you. I see God. You see me. My desire is that you see God. So until next time, let me encourage you to always, always manifest best. And may you be the perfect reflection of your Father. Until next week, God loves you, and so do I. And remember, manifest best. Until next week, good night.